Okay, so here is our 1990 GMC Top Kick. This uh, came from a U-Haul fleet. It was a U-Haul moving van and they were rotating their fleet. And so we uh, jumped on the sale, picked one out that we thought would have uh, the most life left left in it. And granted, this we did this a long time ago. So we're just putting this video out because we felt like there might be some other people interested in converting a U-Haul to a livable space or to an RV. Let me tell you about some of the things I absolutely love about this truck and chassis. If you look down the sides of it, number one, your tires aren't real big, so they're not very expensive as far as, as, far as truck tires go, which is great. It makes it easy to get tires changed. Okay, the next thing that comes along is the overall chassis is really low. Yeah, low center of gravity. So when it comes to how much head height you have inside of the coach, it's a dream. If you've ever been in an RV and you felt like you were in a, a cave, cave that's not this truck there's yeah. plenty of room for bunk beds in the back we've got a, a shower stall we've got a kitchen dinette, dinette. and then the, the mother's den in the front mm -hmm. we took and we added a foot of plywood inside of here and that ended up being big enough for a queen size bed which was great it sleeps four in the back two up top and then there's two uh there's a couch you one can sleep on and you can also put a cot in there. So I don't know, what is that? Two, eight. four, five, six, seven, eight in a pinch if you're trying to get people out of the weather, which is great. Um, one of the things I found was that right underneath here is a ton of room. And you can see I was easily able to put two propane tanks in here. I just took some fuel tubing and trimmed it to make a bushing to keep them from rubbing on the tanks here. I've got oh, this one and yeah. this one. See, that's what that is, the, the bushing to yeah. keep it from rubbing. Now, these tanks are all scratched up. They're really old because this is we oh. did this over 10 years ago. Yeah, but they still work yeah, just fine. Yeah, they, they work great. The brakes right down here is the master fluid for the brakes, so that's super easy to work on. Um, right here is a hot water tank, a uh, gas-fired hot water tank, and all it takes is, there it is right there. Getting a little dusty a little and rusty, rusty now, yeah. but man, it always worked great. This thing always had hot water for showers. I was always impressed. And for a girl with long hair? Yeah, yeah. You had all the hot water you needed. Yep. Um, it's got the water hookup, so if you pull in and you want to hook up to water, then you just plug into household water. And we have a 100 gallon holding tank for yep. water underneath here is a hundred gallon holding tank so there's plenty of water especially for girls long here that's your and then you can either outlet. plug the generator into this or you can plug it into the wall outlet and run it just like the house this is a water tank but we used the locking fuel cap because we didn't want anybody playing games with our water ah, and yeah. making somebody sick or whatever putting soap in there who knows people do all kinds of bad things but um so it's got a locking cap on it um batteries we have two batteries on this thing very simple to set up two of them right there and, uh, everything's led that's about all the power you need it's silly um we also took an old file cabinet and this is just kind of a junk box and uh look know, at that folks an old file cabinet and he has all of the tools and repair stuff Just that he would it. need. Yeah, there's some junk in it's, there too. It's old but, now. <laughs> um, Again, we did this over 10 years ago. Yep. Yeah. And then it only took three steps and that was real easy to bolt up to the bottom of the coach. And this this was a um, RV pick and pull, right? Yep. And the man door, he pulled the door off of Took an, R off of RV, an RV that was in pick and pull. So pick and pull in California had a place where they were taking RVs from people who had, uh, you know, basically given up on them. And I made friends with the manager there. He let me spend about four hours in the back of his RV pile. And I got all the water tanks, side doors, everything uh i needed to make this thing into a decent coach and then this is the coleman propane heater yep and one of the things i'd really recommend is right here we put uh coat hooks by the door so that you know coats take up a lot of space 
and uh, you can even see up above there, we took some headlights from Craig and O'Reilly and uh, made entrance. outside lights. And mm -hmm. so this had everything on it that you would find on a conventional coach. Now that strap over that light was from a... I just bent some aluminum up because we were driving down the road one time on a mountain road and a tree snagged yes. one of those lights and just ripped it right so off. That, so that's why that is there. It's to protect that light protect the lights when you're yeah yeah and then the spigot here that's for washing off feet or hands yeah when you go to the beach and the kids are covered with sand i can't tell you how many times that saved the day we had a little roll out wood uh <clears throat> what do you call those um it was like a doormat a yeah out wood doormat that we'd put there and then we'd um put a little hose on there so we could wash the kids feet off and and all that sort of thing and then it was a lot of fun because the kids could open up the top window and as strangers would walk by, they'd say, hey, hey, you, you want a cheeseburger or a milkshake? <laughs> <laughs> so they made it into like a drive up window. And oh, we had so much fun surprising people with kids popping their heads out yep. of the top of the RV. Not to mention, when we went places, people had to come in and yes. see it. They just couldn't believe it. They knew that this was a, a U-Haul that had been converted, and so they had to ask questions wherever we went. And then built um, the shower bathroom stall. Um, it's was, really basic. That was a priority for us, though, to have a large shower stall because we were tired to ha of having turn the lights on. Tired of having small RV motorhome um, showers because you're constantly either bumping your elbows or you're having to duck or get your head under the shower yeah. faucet or head. So when we decided to do this, this was number one priority was a really nice big shower, tall wide yeah you, you didn't feel cramped so we looked at the shower what do you call this pan shower pan, shower Home pan Depot, yeah. the sizes that they offered and picked a size that we thought would work well in here that we would be comfortable um using but that would be bigger than those really tiny cramped little ones that you get in manufactured rvs and mobile homes yeah we do not have a flush toilet we didn't want to do that we thought that was even more complicated but we have this little guillotine, you pull the guillotine out, this little suitcase toilet, which has worked fine for us. We, if we're gone for more than two days in this, we just have to change it. Um, there's the vent he put in, you can open up to vent. And our little caddy there that holds our shampoos and soaps and a towel rack in there. Now yeah, the other thing we have is a fold up table for um, the dinette. That folds up, little leg folds up, and it all goes up and gets we, well. We created a leaf where this joint is, so yeah. it actually, when we use the leaf, it actually comes out almost to the door. Yeah. Um, so if we have friends that want to come over, we have seating for eight, eight or nine. I think we can get nine in around this table, which we've done quite a few camp times. Camp chairs and stools around here. Yeah. But, um, Honey, explain the pass-through. You used truck inner tubes to seal oh, yeah. the driver's cab from back here. So this is the pass-through into the cab. You can see, so it's like a normal Class A. And then just between the truck and the cab, I used a piece of truck tire inner tube in between there and then some hose and uh, sealed it up. So going down the road, um, the kids can hang out or whatever and... Uh, they can climb in the back here and make lunch while we're going down the road. And uh, everything works really well. And just some Velcro on a homemade. We took a welding tarp from Harbor Freight, I think, and sewed that up real quick and made ourselves a, uh, a little cover. And then, of course, this is the... Uh, mother's den which is storage right now which yeah it's storage but it's got a queen size bed up there so when it, we sleep everybody's comfortable that's the most critical so thing i would say your two aces if you are interested in doing this yeah would be to go to an rv pick and pull for parts yeah. to salvage which is what we did the couch was from an old rv that was at pick and pull the sink is an RV sink here. Some of these windows Brian pulled out of RVs that were in pick and pull. Um, and basically kind of salvaged as many parts as we could. 
And then um, the cabinets here came from the local dump. We just happened to go to the dump to see maybe they might have something for us today that we could use. And we scored that day. There was all of these old cabinets. Do you even remember what they came out of? No, they were just metal cabinets yes. laid on the ground. And we were on a budget. We were looking for something cheap. And this is a metal box. So we thought, what not better to do metal cabinets in a metal box? Yep. Also, don't be afraid of using plywood for a countertop. This is just um, a plywood uh, cabinet grade plywood from Home Depot. And uh, you can see there's a heater down there. There's a buddy heater for backup. We've never used it. Um, and um, let's see, there's we have the a fridge. We put a fridge in from um, Home Depot. It's a magic chef. You can see it's taken taken some dents and hits along the way with gear and dirt bike, probably dirt bike handles falling into it. <laughs> a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We have a microwave. Um, and it has worked and how did you do the fridge you just took these big brackets and yep. and be careful where you put these in the side of the fridge because yes. you can do something that will damage the internal parts the coils are in the walls of the refrigerator so what you have to do is very gently drill the outside casing and check it for coils because you do not want to put a screw into a coil i did that once or twice and it cost us an extra 200 bucks for a another another refrigerator yes. but um and then the fold down bunks are just you can see they're, they're plywood here again we're using this as storage right now um but he's got chain he he's attached it with chain and the chain goes into the wall um we can fold these up if we need to but most of the time um let me turn around we would just keep the uppers down and put our gear bags or our camp gear on these two uppers fold up the lower ones and then we would roll in our dirt bikes so if you have atvs or or quads or something you want to roll into the back that would work if you have the ability to fold up the beds against the wall so there are four beds back here um, the lower two again are folded up um, because we're storing a couch in here right now and we have all these tubs so oh another thing is the rubber floors you can see it's just rubber flooring like, you buy it in mats from like restaurant stores yep and uh and at that, the time i think home depot or lowe's yes. had it and you could just buy the mats and they just lift out but they create insulation because this has got an aluminum floor so they create insulation so your feet aren't freezing also they're a great dirt catcher and then we just use throw rugs over the top of it and uh then for cleanup it just takes a matter of minutes you know if we want to go somewhere we just pull the stuff out throw the rugs out shake them out load the food and provisions for the yes. weekend and, and the, um and away we go that we got to hose this out that's when i knew we did the right thing because the dirt bikes camping they get it, everything gets really dirty in here so one day um it had collected some mud and dirt bikes too much for us to be okay with so it was like just, two or three years down the road it was yeah it was a while so we just took a day and we pulled up all of the rubber mats and we took everything out and we got in here with a hose and we just hosed the aluminum floor and just flushed the water down out the back and it was the most beautiful thing <laughs> <laughs> little simple green and and the yes. place was sparkling and we dried it up with some cleaning towels and lay the rubber mats back down and yep. it was good to go for several more trips so this thing's about 10 12 years old now i think we've had it for a long um, time we bought it in 2009 2009, 2009 is when we bought it and this is 23 so, so we've had it for a long time this is not a fresh daisy we no. have used this this has seen abuse it is yep. somewhere in tear um i in hindsight i wish we would have done a video on the DIY and the how-to when we first did this, when yeah. everything was fresh and not scratched or stained or whatever. Yeah. Um, but we didn't, and it served a yeah. wonderful purpose for our family. So if you're looking for a how to make a homemade custom RV, um, we, we've done it. We would highly recommend going to U-Haul or, yeah. you know, I don't know how well Penske and Ryder trucks yeah. are in comparison to U-Haul, but they frequently rotate their fleet and get one of those trucks and figure out you know what it is that's going to work for you yeah and one of the critical things is headspace inside here there's tons of headspace just as a final closing comment 
and also it's just three steps to the ground so a lot of trucks are 48 inches off the ground this had a low center of gravity and then for the ceilings all i had to do was um get this wood backed uh it's kind of like a cabinet covering four by eight sheets that you could buy it um at home depot it's paper particle board um and then just one inch rigid foam insulation for the ceiling the walls are already three quarter inch plywood so you do have some uh insulation there but you know remember this thing's for the weekend it's not for living in year in year out right this is a weekend warrior machine and, this and was so our third because we started with an yeah. older c-class dodge rv yeah that, that just didn't work it was a lemon and then we decided to go the other opposite route and buy something brand new a weekend warrior toy hauler which yep. fell apart and the company went bankrupt and the we first not, nine times out it we went were, back yes. eight times for warranty work we were not happy with weekend weekend warrior at all yeah, um they were having issues at and the time. so we took it back and then the, the company went bankrupt so then we thought okay we've done this twice what's wrong with us making our own homemade rv and making it the way that would function the best for us and we are familiar with it we know what's been done to it um and kind of took things in our own hands matters into our own hands so that's where we thought hmm i wonder yeah. if we got a u-haul and just converted it ourselves if that's a viable option and it yeah. is a much cheaper option and i gotta say for what owning this as long as we have you can see where all the kids <laughs> through um, the family we have the storyboard of their height storyboard height and year let's see what's the first one oh, oh it gosh. goes way down there right here piper yeah our she little girl little. um so we've had a million fun stories with this thing the kids always had a ball oh the other thing is we put in roof vents that one's got bees in it now and then also the seats flip up you can see their storage this is shredded and it's really old now, but we just got uh, pieces of thick foam at like a, a futon store that, that provides the foam pieces to the measurement of our, um, our seating, our benches that we wanted. And then again, got some of this thick material and used that to um, sew it on and cover it up with. But right now um, we just cover it with a towel. <laughs> when we were pretty well petered out on the whole dirt biking fun machine weekend warrior thing it turned into great storage or if we have family traveling through or friends or missionaries, um, we would have some missionaries passing through we have just extra storage and housing and it's great because we just plug it in and um, they can have hot water and hot showers and yep. do whatever they need to out here so i think if if we had possibly any one maybe con or negative is that you do have to be mindful and aware that it is an aluminum box metal box um, and so if there's temperature fluctuations um, that are drastic heat cold cold heat it will the walls will sweat and so you just have to be aware that um, you know in the mornings if you've had the heater on all night to stay warm in the mornings you're going to need to take some paper towels or rags and just wipe the walls down and help with the sweating that really I think, I mean, this was 2009 to now, this is a long time we've been using this that we've created. I think that's probably really the only con, but if you're aware and know how to handle it, it's not really a con. You just have to be proactive. Yeah.